hi, uh, I'm uh, Derek Eater. Uh, I'm uh, founder and board president of Chai Hack Night. My name is Mieko Furuhashi. I'm a board member. I'm Steve Ediger, and I've been coming to Chai Hack Night for a very long time. <laughs> Although I'm not a founder, uh, and I am the treasurer on the board. Excellent. Um, all right. So um, the point of this uh, presentation, if um, if folks have been keeping up with us, we have uh, recently, in the last like six months or so, started the process of becoming a 501c3 organization. It's actually been more like 18 months, but we like officially uh, incorporated as a as an institution at, on December 31st, 2018. Um, so. Uh, we had a presentation back in November talking about that change. You can go watch that video if you want to hear about that. This uh, presentation is really about the work that we've been doing in the last six months as we being the board of directors, um, Steve, Mieko, and myself are uh, members of that board. There's actually a couple of other board members here in the audience. Would you all mind making yourselves recognized? Uh, we've got Steve Luker over here, Cameron So, Katie O'Shea, Josh Kalov. Any other board members here? Okay, cool. So there's 11 of us all told, and we've been hard at work. And we've very, been very inward focused over the last six months, just setting up our organization. If no one here has ever set up a nonprofit before, it's a lot of work. <laughs> and I didn't know that. I knew it was some, but like I didn't know how much it would be, especially doing it the way we're doing it, which is it's a membership based uh, nonprofit. And so we're here tonight to talk to you a little bit about what that actually means. And this is actually an opportunity and an invitation to all of you in this room and then everybody else who comes to Chai Hack Night to actually officially become um, members of Chai Hack Night. And we'll talk about why that's uh, something that you, it might be useful or, or a good idea for you to do and then how you can do it. Um, so before we get into that, um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just talking about sort of the prehistory of sort of the 18 month period we are in right now uh, that led us to the decision. Um, and it's useful grounding context because I think there's, as usual, a lot of new folks here. Um, but there's some folks who've been coming for you know five, six years, maybe like Steve. Uh, but then other folks who've you know been coming for the last year. So a lot of changes has happened. And literally today is is our official seven year anniversary. We've been doing this for seven years, 350 events. So um, it's it's a it's a good time to stop and just look back on what we've done and take a, an assessment of that and then look to, to where we're going next. Um, so a brief history of it. Um, this is um, a screenshot I took from like the idea, like the moment it happened. This is the very first conversation that sparked Chai Hack Night. Um, this is, do anyone remember Juan Pablo Velez? He, um, he started Chai Hack Night with me. So it was not called Chai Hack Night, it was called OpenGov Hack Night. And this is us talking about like, oh, we want to get some stuff done. We want to work on civic apps. Let's like have a place to do that. Let's just start meeting. Um, and then like, like, let's meet at Starbucks. No, let's meet at Webatex, which is actually the, jo the, like, the place I was working at the time. So this is like the moment, um, March 20th, uh, 2012, is when like we had the idea and we started meeting on a weekly basis. Um, and funny thing happens, we decided to meet. Then we met the next week and the next week. So this is the earliest picture I have, because we didn't think it was anything special, so we didn't take a picture on the first hack night. This is the first picture I took of any hack night. This is OpenGov hack night number seven. Um, there's a few folks in here. Um, my wife's in the corner, Steve Vance. I see Josh, Josh Kalov. Oh, man. Uh, so uh, stuck with us. Um, then we sort of started to grow. We moved into 1871, uh, which is just upstairs in the Merchandise Mart, grew, growing a little bit more. Um, Hack Night 49, we got this room, got that room upstairs got very full. It was the IMSA classroom, if anybody's ever been up in 1871. We definitely broke the fire code rules for that room. <laughs> we were there for about two and a half years. Um, this literally, like, this is the same room. Like, it's just, you couldn't breathe in there. It was so hot. Um, then about around 100, uh, episode 150, we moved to Braintree, which is where we've been for the last three or plus four years. Um, and we're growing. Uh, and then this is Chai Hack Night 200. And then now here we are at uh, Chai Hack Night 350. So there's a lot of history there. Let's pause to appreciate Chai Hack Night 350. So there's a lot of history there. And while we were, while we were you know, going through this and, and, and meeting every week, um, 
we kind of practiced what software developers like to call iterative development, or every week we just sort of like took what we learned from the previous week and like made some slight changes and improved it. And we, over 350 events, really, you can start to develop some practices, right? Like we have co-hosts tonight and they follow uh, a, like a pretty consistent script, right? And like new folks can be, I think it was, it was your first, second time co-hosting and you're like a pro at it already. And it's testament to you, but also testament to process. And we have a process and we've developed these processes iteratively over time. We've also grown from like me asking for people to donate like five bucks here or there for some food to having like a fully fledged budget of about $60,000 a year to run this event, right? You have to have processes in place to pay our wonderful film crew and our wonderful ASL uh, interpreters uh, and do all the things that we need to do to run an event. And so it's, it's a natural step for us uh, to, to become a nonprofit. It was actually something I was a little bit resistant to in the beginning because I liked how like ad hoc it was, but I really did soon realize after a lot of conversation about it that it's really important to have something more structured, um, to be able to have something that lives beyond the people who started it, right? Because as you can see, Juan Pablo, who I mentioned in the beginning, he's not here. He moved to New York, as people do, right? And since, since some people do, you know, people that we still love, but you know, um, they move. Um, and people move on to other things, right? People come and go. Um, but this institution that we've built here in Chicago is really important, and it's important enough to preserve in a way that is structured, in a way that allows it to live beyond the people who started it, right? So I'm still very much involved in TriHackNet. Again, I'm the board president, but I have been able to, because of the structure we put in place, step back in like a major way that has allowed other people to take some of that responsibility, lift themselves up as leaders, uh, and like give me some time. Like I got two kids now. And and like, I got a lot of other things going on. So it's like necessary, right? Um, so just to recap from, this is back from November, but to recap from folks, is it's not something we talk about every day, but we actually do have a mission statement now. Um, as part of this 18 month process, we um, developed a mission statement. That mission statement is to inspire and promote civic engagement and technology. It's short, it took us way longer than you might have thought to come up with, but we felt that it summarized what it is we're here to do. Um, we have values, and I won't list through all of these, but this is another set of things that we've spent time thinking and writing down and validating and checking and having a common and shared understanding about what we're doing, right? Um, it, if you haven't ever done this for your organization, even if you're a nonprofit or not, it's actually just a super useful exercise to go through. Like, what are your values, right? You might think of it in your head, but um, having it, going through the process of writing it down is really important, and having everybody who's involved share that is a really powerful thing. Um, I also just wanted to recognize there's, like I mentioned, there are board members who are here in the room, but there's several others who are not, and I wanted to just pause and recognize them as well. Um, everybody on the board contributes a ton of time and effort to make this happen. We're all unpaid. Um, we are devoting our nights and weekends and also weekdays sometimes to doing the work behind the scenes that makes this event happen. Um, and so it's just worth recognizing that. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Mieko and talk about becoming a member. member. Thank you. Um, so I just wanna talk a little bit about becoming a member. I know this is a membership-based organization. You can still come to Chai Hak Night, all of the events, all of everything, even though you're not a member. Um, this doesn't stop you, but why you wanna be a member if you can still do everything that it says you can. So one of the things you get as a member, you get a run for the board, like us, so you can actually make decisions what the Chai Hak Night can be or should be the way we want to run. So this is a great way to actually contribute it to the Chai Hak Night. And also you can vote for the changes we make in the policies and bylaws, or anything we decide to do. And also, you know, this is something that you become a member of this great organization and deeply connected to the community with us. And also put your name on this great history, great civic organization to lead this civic technology group. Um, so what do you have to do to become a member? So first, we have application online. I'll sh navigate through this later. 
But um, when we were talking about what the members sh should be, we thought about many different things. We want to make sure money won't stop people becoming a member. So we have uh, three different ways to become a member. Um, one is to attend the HI Hack Night events and to pay annual fee, or you attend HI Hack Night events and volunteer some four hours a year, which is not that much. If you, you know, host three times, four times, that's your four hours. Um, or attend 15 Chai Hack Night event per year. If you meet one of these things, um, you can apply for membership. And also follow the code of conduct. We want to respect everybody here, be nice, and everything that way. So here's the link. So if you go to the Chai Hack Night homepage, this is actually how you can apply. Um, if you go to Chai Hack Night top page, you will see the link said join. And you will see um, application, you fill in, and that's it, click submit. And we'll go through your application and we'll let you know if you are qualified for the member. And please fill out your application um, as soon as possible. Uh, the link is presented right here. So it's also on the website as well. It's from the top of the page. If you go here, right here, it says join. Pretty simple. Um, so becoming a member is something that we decided a while ago was really an important thing that represents one of the values we have. Right? We care about democracy. We care about transparency and openness. And we also care about empowering folks in Chicago, right? And one of the reasons we decided to create ourselves as a membership-based organization, um, and by the way, that's not just like lip service, like it's in our bylaws. Like you become a member, you have voting power. And that voting power, you can like become, a, you can become a run for the board. You can also like vote people off the board. Like you can vote me off the board, it's possible. I will fight tooth and nail, but you can try. And that's the idea, right? Is like we don't just want to talk about how um, how we are going to hold Chicago and Cook County and you know the new Lightfoot administration to a high standard of transparency and accountability. We want to actually enact that and, and walk the walk and talk the talk ourselves. So it really is about empowering folks and is about a way to give you like an on ramp to becoming part of this community and also a way to. Uh, move yourself into a, a more of a high position in the Chi Hack com Night community and the Chicago Civic Tech community to be a known person, right? Um, we really saw that there was a small group of folks like myself who started Chi Hack Night and who felt the, uh, you know, they, they felt comfortable enough to just dive in. That's not necessarily the most inclusive way to organize something, right? And so we wanted to make a clear way for folks to put the requirements in and actually become uh, a, a person who, a, a member of a community that actually has power and say in the, in the rest of this community. So it's really us trying to put our best foot forward as far as trying to help make that happen. But it will require folks to actually apply, right? It will require folks to actually want to become members. And hopefully we've made it compelling enough um, for you to want to do that. Um, I think that's a good, anything to add before you want to go into the facilitated discussion? Uh, okay, great. Um, so we're going to turn it over to Steve Ettinger, who is, as he said in his introduction, a facilitator and a commoner. <laughs> Today he will be facilitating a conversation for us. Um, and, oh, and I'll hand the mic off. So um, I, I look forward to hearing what you all say. Thanks. All right. Um, I, I often wonder, when I announce myself as a facilitator and commoner every week, what people think about that, but you get to see it in action tonight. All right, so this is question and answer, only we're going to flip it around, and I'm going to ask the questions. Oh, thanks. I'm going to ask the questions, and you're going to give us some answers. And the reason that we're doing this is that we want the central question here is what would you like to see Chai Hack Night focus on? in the next year. Um, we're very interested in doing this. We've been kind of uh, turned inward for a little while, and, we're, and we're, we're very interested in getting more 
back to more feedback from folks uh, that are participating by coming, by participating in breakout groups. So the rational aim is to inform the board and uh, committees about uh, your ideas in your, uh, in your action areas that you'd like us to focus on. Uh, and the existential aim or how we'd like you to feel is we'd like you to feel empowered in doing that. Uh, let me just give you a little context. It's been a little while. Uh, we did a little bit, Derek and I facilitated a discussion in um, November, but before that maybe it was a year and a half ago uh, or more that we, uh, that we came out and got feedback from you all. Um, so we wanted to do that again. We've also been focused inwardly on establishing the new organization. We really started working on this la last February, I think. Uh, we had a board, we had a, a leadership council retreat, and that led to another leadership council retreat, and that led to a steering committee that lasted about eight months, uh, <laughs> uh, or uh, six, six or seven months, and uh, so uh, we. We've kind of been focusing on building this uh, nonprofit, uh, all the structures that we need to build for the nonprofit. And uh, now we want to come back and reconnect with the membership. Uh, and we see this not just as a, a one off thing. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to set up um, opportunities for you to give us feedback uh, consistently and feedback that gets translated into action on our part. So that's what this is about. Um, so just to recap, the changes in how Chi, Chi Hack Night operates from the original Chi Hack Night to where we're at now. We had a leadership council. Now we have a board of directors and other councils and committees, um, and those committees and councils will be open for, uh, for members uh, to, to serve on. Uh, because as we said, even with 11 of us working our tails off, we still have quite a bit of uh, difficulty uh, in getting all of the work done all of the time. Um, so we would really like to see more people step up and we're gonna try to create that ramp for you to ramp up uh, to becoming more uh, part of Chi Hack Night and the way, and the way that it works. Um, the the uh, participants and volunteers are now becoming an empowered membership. Uh, ad hoc decision making processes uh, where somebody just did something. Uh, a good example of this is Mieko. <laughs> I said, we need to have put these name tags that say Chai Hack Night to, you, to use. Maybe we should write our names, maybe we should write our names on them. And Mieko took that and put it into action and has been standing uh, in, in the hallway as you enter and asking you to put your name on your tags. <coughs> um, I think that's helped. It's, it's helped me remember a lot of people's names. Um, and I think that's helped build a community. But that's the way ki things kind of, kind of used to work. Now we're going into a more formal governance. But we don't, we, wouldn't, we don't want to eliminate that way of working. We really want to respect uh, the do-ism kind of uh, aspect of things. Uh, but we also want to introduce more formal governance so we have a plan, we know where we're going. Uh, finally, a meandering approach to kind of a more purposeful approach. Uh, we've been having discussions on the booking team, which I'm a member of and uh, saying, well, what is it that we really want to focus on in booking? Is it just that we, some people come and ask us to speak, or we hear about something and go out and ask people to speak? That's all kind of uh, an ad hoc way of doing things. Uh, we're trying to get to a point where we've built relationships with specific institutions around town, like the City of Chicago Department of IT, uh, like uh, the folks at City Bureau, uh, who are out doing interesting things. A lot of different folks around town that are doing very interesting things in um, the civic arena uh, and somewhat technology related uh, so that we can be more purposeful, as I said. So that's uh, us talking. Now I want to hear from you.